Oh man, I'm just loaded with appreciation. And uh, we got, as promised, we got a little help from people whose talent and work I appreciate. The Fusebox Gang. And uh, they sent me a bunch of rare Jimbo interviews that they did. Jimbo seems to have uh, touched the lives of everyone who was involved in the Overnight Scape Underground during his tenure here. And that we have two of those interviews for you on this very show. And they're coming right up, actually. And a tip of the hat to Mark Rose and the rest of the gang, Jeff Pollard, uh, Milk Keynes, Timo. In fact, the first interview with Jimbo, that that's what this file is labeled. We're going to listen to this together. Uh, we don't preview a lot of the content, especially stuff that we get from our friends in Onsugland. The Overnight Scape Underground, as I keep extolling their virtues, is an amazing place for night radio. And that's the feel, the whole magic that I am trying to be a part of and learn how to do and present to you here on this series of internet transmissions some call them podcasts. Um, I don't know. Uh, at a certain point, and now this is years ago, and apparently Apple has uh, ceased, but at one point, Apple Mac kind of liked to think that they owned the word podcast. They had created it, and that made me nervous calling anything I did a podcast. But And uh, now podcasts apparently require a video presence and I notice the shows I post on YouTube, a lot of people don't stick with it. They see that this is a static image and I am just giving you the audio with a static image. But this is night radio and you don't want to see me flailing around and look at my face and my expressions. That's just not part of what I do. I have a face for radio. Okay, in a photo, if I point the right way, I look almost human, but I'm not. I'm just not. So, the, I know you're waiting. I'm not the sort to save and make you listen to a whole show, or worse yet, try to scooch ahead and find the part you want to listen to. Let's get to the stuff you want to hear. This is Timo interviewing the late, great Jimbo. Tonight on The Jimbo Interview, Jimbo interviews someone, but probably not Jimbo, I don't think. Today from Erie, Pennsylvania, Timo of The Fusebox Show. Well, hey, Timo, uh, thanks for joining me. (laughs) Uh, you know, you and I may have gotten off on the wrong foot. I just want to apologize and say that, you know, I probably judged you and uh, have thought some evil thoughts about you that I maybe shouldn't have, and uh, I just want to apologize for that. Oh, no, no. I'm just going to pretty much give you some softball questions at the beginning, and we'll get a little deeper as we go, so... First of all, I want to know uh, how much you weigh. Oh, my goodness. Well, Timo, in the South, you're what we call a a big enough. I've never seen you, Timo. Never have. But the other day I was watching Jeopardy, and there was a lady on there. And when I saw her, I thought, that's Timo. <laughs> Who gives you more gas, politicians or priests? <laughs> gas. How many baby turtles have you eaten at one one sitting? 
My apologies, Timo. I just assume. You... Never mind. <laughs> Do you have a significant other? <clears throat> <laughs> I understand, Timo. A little touchy about that subject, are you? Do you remember the first time, Timo, that you went on a rampage? You remember that? <sighs> Timo, no talk about... Timo, are you getting paid as much as the pocket squirrels are? I don't think you are. Timo, uh, 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 When you were babysitting that time, do you remember eating any of the children's pets? It's uh, me. No, when you take a crap, do you use toilet paper, or what do you do exactly in there? Uh, 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 Have you ever eaten any disabled people? Have you ever sodomized Santa Claus? <laughs> Oh, the humanity. Thank you, uh, Timo. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, 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 wow! That was that was a blast. That that I, I thank you guys for sending that along and letting me share that. Amazing. I mean, Jimbo probably at his most untamed and irreverent, and Timo that just always always gets to me and and that amazing fuse box production value and sound effects and and that clean sound it, it, it sounds like you guys are professional or something so i can really oh it's just it's it's a magical thing the fuse box show and the easiest place to find it since i'm sending you there anyways is to check them out every two weeks on the Overnight Scape Underground. And uh, there is another fellow who is an integral part of the Fusebox show, and that's Milt Keynes. And yes, I was mistaken. For some reason, I thought the interview was going to go the other way and Jimbo was being interviewed. However, I stand corrected. And now we can both wonder, is this Milt Keynes, the mysterious man of Fusebox, interviewing Jimbo? Or is this Jimbo interviewing Milt Keynes? Who knows? We're going to find out together uh, at this very moment. Hey, uh, can you guys keep those windows open? I mean, oh, it, yeah, you want them open? Yeah, it's really. Yeah, 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 sure, we can do that. Can you do that? Oh, yeah. It's really nice today. No problem, buddy. Thanks, man. Well, Milt, thank you for. Joining me, man. Uh, see you, man. It's a pleasure to finally uh, get to sit down and talk with you. Uh, oh, well, my pleasure, Jimbo. I think. 
You know, I'll be I'll be honest here right from the beginning because uh, I feel like that's really the way to be. You know, I don't know anything about you. I don't know. I guess you're the engineer there or whatever. Well, who is Milt? Tell me about Milt. Uh, well, yeah, you, you guess right. I'm the board op of a podcast called uh, Fuse Box. And, uh... You know, when I do hear you, I hear you come on and you always have that, like, uh, engineer voice, you know, like, comes over the intercom kind of sound. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you, you mean, uh... And you are soaking in it. Yeah, like, like that. Exactly. Uh... <laughs> Well, you know, obviously you're the engineer and you're the one uh, pulling all the strings, basically, in the control room there. Um, what's it like working for Fusebox Productions? I mean, obviously, well, first class company, first class show here. What's it like to be first class? Mmm, uh, taco. Sorry. Uh, what's it like to be uh, first class? Man, man, you're you're asking the wrong guy, Jimbo. <laughs> uh, just kidding, sort of. Well, you know, it's great, of course. Uh, Mark Rose, our show host, is uh, just a sweetheart of a guy to work with. Uh. He's exactly what you hear on the show in real life. A damn decent dude and a brilliantly talented writer and voice actor, musician, mixologist, uh, Japanese pocket squirrel wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our co-producer and resident baseball expert, Jeff Pollard. Uh, he also does all the cover art and branding and whatnot for the show, you know. Yeah, he's a damn great writer, an actor, and, and as well as a, a graphic designer. Well, the three of us get along great and uh, work really well together. And, well, everyone on the show is talented as hell and shares the same vision as far as putting together the best damn show we can. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's about as serious as I'll ever get. In fact, I think I might have pulled a muscle there, but... uh. Yeah, great show, great people to work with. Uh, I'm a lucky guy, man, really. Now that I have you here and kind of away from Mark, can you tell me who does the voice of Timo? <laughs> can you tell me that? So, Jimbo, it's so weird you would ask that. See, because uh, a bunch of us at uh, Fusebox wondered, who does the voice of Jimbo? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Jeff and I were talking about that the other day, and we were convinced Jimbo was a character. M Mark said you were 100% genuine, but we <laughs> we were skeptical as hell. And damn, man, here you are right in front of me. Love it, man. Love it. But uh, anyway, uh, to answer your question, the, the, the big guy is... So let me ask you, you're, are you in a control room, like, separate from... Mark and uh, well, I uh, or is that just all for show? Because no, no, I uh, there, we, or like are you sitting right next to Mark? Or are you not even really sitting there at all? No, actually, what we have is uh, nothing. I'm insinuating anything here because I'll tell you, I've done this. To, you know, when I was a, t a young teenager, I like to smell, I like to smell of gasoline. I'm not going to say that I huff gasoline, but I like to smell of gasoline and. Probably if given the opportunity, if somebody had presented me with some gasoline to huff, I probably would have because for some reason I had this addiction to the smell of gasoline. Have you been uh, huffing that gasoline today, man? And uh, I just wanted to know, uh, what did you huff when you were growing up? Wow. Uh, wow. W uh, well, uh, gym socks mostly. See, uh, I used to sneak into the girls' locker room, and, uh... What kind I, of music do you enjoy? Uh, 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 music? Uh, oh, well, uh, I like all kinds, really. Uh, I used to play in a punk polka band. 
We did a lot of Lawrence Welk covers. Play a pretty mean accordion, if I do say so myself. So yeah, I, I dig polka music, of course. I, I like uh, lounge music, pop, rock, industrial metal, punk, uh, hip-hop, elevator music. Uh, hey, I'm a huge fan of the Carpenters. Uh, Guar, ABBA. Uh, the Beatles, Stones, of course. I oh, I like Hank Williams. Uh, the, the the first one, the original, not the uh, not the other two. Uh, I dig me some Buddy Holly, U two, uh, Nickelback. You know, Mark's always listening to Zappa, and I think it's safe to say old Mark has a huge man crush on Frank Zappa. Say, I bet you didn't know Mark sleeps in a Frank Zappa onesie, did you? So, uh, he's got me kind of liking Zappa these days, but, man, I'll, I'll listen to a monkey banging rocks together if it's got a sweet beat. You know, you live in Portland or the Portland area. Have you ever gone to that uh, famous donut place there that they shove the pretzel in and make the donut bleed? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Voodoo Donuts. Yeah, I've been there. Of course. Strange place. Full of, uh... Weirdos, man. Good donuts, though. The line to get in is always uh, insanely long, but people will stand in line for an hour to get their voodoo donut on, man. <laughs> you know, I blew their minds one time when I ordered a plain donut. <laughs> you know, I've never really been to Portland, but I was thinking that if I ever had gone to Portland, and uh, we probably would go to the, uh, you know, to the ocean. And I was wondering if you had ever gone to the ocean, and since the ocean there is nothing but a bunch of craggly rocks, if you've ever gone swimming out there and had your head bashed against the rocks uh, when you were little. Seriously, Jimbo, I think you've been hitting that Texaco unleaded a wee hard. I'm going to be completely serious here, Milt. How will I be able to tell? It's obvious that you do a wonderful job. Uh, for Fusebox. Uh, Mark sounds great every week. And, you know, I really don't know how much of that is you, but uh, you're obviously involved in that heavily. And you do a wonderful job. And everybody here is envious of you. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I remember the, you know, the first show. I remember... Um, just so many people talking behind the scenes about uh, Fusebox and, and we're all jealous of you. I, I am especially jealous of every one of you there at Fusebox. And I just want to let you know that. No kidding. Wow. Well, thank you, Jimbo. No, that really, really does mean a lot to us. Seriously, man. Thanks. And, and and to be serious right back at you, everyone works their ass off there, and we all really try to do the best show we can with what we have there, you know? Top to bottom, man. We have some seriously talented people there. Starting with a couple of insanely talented co-producers, you know, Mark and Jeff, and with uh, Mark being a great show host. Man, that cat, uh, he, he never mails it in, you know what I mean? And, and Jeff's writing, it's funny, witty, clever, provocative. They're both also super talented actors. And, 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 and yeah, yeah, actors. Man, we, we have an incredible stable of actors who are, who are all now really good friends. Decent people, man. Total pros. It's all, it's all about uh, aligning yourself with, uh, with talented professionals, Jimbo, who are all decent, giving, and... Helpful folks, man. Like I said, total pros. And it doesn't hurt that the chicks we have are all smoking hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, Mil, you, you're Italian. Got an Italian name, right? Uh, huh? Italian? When you eat spaghetti, do you just do you slurp it up or do you roll it? Uh, roll it? Uh, what do you... You know, uh, like roll it up with your fork, or, and do you use a spoon to help guide it? You're Italian, aren't you? Uh, no, Jimbo, I'm, uh, I'm actually not Italian. Uh, uh, 
Pennsylvania Dutch, mostly, I think. So, uh... Let's see, uh, I'm not real good at this, but isn't uh, LSD legal in uh, Oregon? No, but I'm starting to think that it's legal at your house. Uh, I'm doing this interview, and I really, I really don't feel like I know what to ask you. I'm, I, I, it's not that I disrespect you or anything. It's just like I don't hardly even know who you are, man. I mean, you, you, it's just like a little voice is all you are, and a little you know, voice. You know, I, I guess I, I've learned to appreciate that voice, obviously. Working at doing the fuse box show and everything, but I don't even know you, man. What, what is? Why are we even doing this interview? I, you know what I'm saying? I don't uh, even know. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm uh, suddenly kind of wondering why myself. Actually, no. I, of course, uh, this this most of this interview was just done in jest. We all know who you are, Mort. Mort. And uh, we all appreciate you and the job you do. Oh. Uh, Thanks. You're doing, a, you're doing a wonderful job, and I appreciate you joining me for this interview. I'm glad you didn't get all mad like Timo did that time. And uh, well, it, a- actually, so, so thanks. Well, sure, yeah. Uh, you're 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 welcome. Uh, I think. So uh, we're, uh, we're we're done then, Jimbo. Jimbo? Hey! Buddy, are, are we done here? Jimbo? <sighs> what the f- hell, man? That was some seriously f- up. Hey, Simon, did, did we get it? You guys got everything? It's in the can, man. Yeah? Looks good. So we got it? Yep. So we're done then? Looks good. <sighs> Jesus. Anyone need a beer? <laughs> oh, oh, that was just oh, marvelous. And it just it, those guys playing off of one another... Although I am, since they both mentioned Pennsylvania, in my head, and I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but I am wondering if Timo and Milk Keynes are actually the same person doing voice. I think it could be. I wouldn't bet my last dollar, but I would bet a few bucks that that is the case. Um, I never knew about gas huffing. That's pretty uh, remarkable. Oh, and the pocket squirrel motif. I'm not going to spoil the material, but if you listen to Fusebox with any regularity, you will find out the magic and the wonder of the pocket squirrel phenomenon. And it's it, everybody needs a squirrel in their pocket, no? Good thing I didn't know about gas huffing when I was a kid. My dad, for a brief time, had a Getty station and ran it. And I do remember liking the smell of the gas station and the gasoline, but I don't, I never was a huffer. The closest I ever came to huffing, if I can digress for a minute, was I was working in very close quarters, making a collage with rubber cement. And as you might guess, all of a sudden I was like, whoa, whoa. And yeah, that's that stuff. I guess any, there are a number of chemical elements, but the bad side effect of the rubber cement, while I did get messed up and kind of high, and that part was good, all I could smell or taste for a good hour was rubber cement, which kind of, was a buzzkill on top of the buzz. And yeah, uh, one of these days, Mark Rose and I should do something like we did with the Beatles on the Overnightscape Central, which uh, the last of the Beatles episode ep- episodes, the Beatles after the Beatles, is going to be recording in the next day or so, and in your ears on the Overnightscape Underground. But Zappa has been... An influence, 
a presence in my life since I was a little kid, like six, seven years old. Those corruptive older cousins had the Freak Out album, and I was very young and listening to that craziness and wildness. And from there, well, that's one of these days, sooner than later, I'm going to have to just talk about Frank Zappa and his influence on me and with well, more music. I don't, my music, just to update you on that thing, it used to be, in my head, I really thought I was innovating and doing something neat. And most of what I did was collaborations. I collaborated with Jimbo. I collaborated, well, the last band was Evliss. And the, the, the Azure Attorney stuff with the great artist Shaman Q, Ayakel, whatever uh, he calls himself this week, this month. This, like my band I had in the 90s, the fun was the collaboration and the playing. And yeah, I can sort of fill apart, play rhythm guitar, maybe do a vocal. But I suspect at least for now, my days of uh, producing music. I mean, my, you listen to my older shows, I'm forever playing stuff that I made. And I may go back to that, I may not. Right now, I'm just not feeling it. The last big project was the Evliss Project with Coptic Nerve. And in 2020 and 2021, we recorded a whole bunch of quote-unquote albums which you can find on Bandcamp if you're curious. And again, that was fun. I learned a lot about making music, which is always nice, but I'm not really a music guy. I don't, at, at a certain time, I liked going out in front of people, getting an audience. But my recent performance at the recent Art Hop, that just wasn't the case. I enjoyed presenting the audio collage. Now that, and that audio project, and future ideas in that, still excite me. And, and as a matter of fact, let's hear a little audio collage. I need to uh, appear general-like so my troops will, will respect me. The way you possess a bingo cola. Had to get the negative of the robbery picture treaty held over him. Let's face it, I'm, I, I, I'm old and I'm feeble. You're the bunch of idiots. Heck, it's getting pretty old anyway. Why don't you just dump it back in the box? It's easier to see figures and shapes in some clouds than in other clouds. I guess it's like people interviewing people. You see shapes in them. That guy, he's an iron. Just a little eensy weensy one. And I believe in the United States of America. And be a believer because, oh man, I believe that this heat that uh, we're going to experience here in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and my reluctance to record with the uh, air conditioning on at the same time could cause some brain meltage but th that causes some interesting digressions and jumps and leaps and that that that's fun and that's night radio and maybe night radio needs that in any case i gotta thank mark rose and the fuse box gang again and let you know there is more there are two more interviews that i have so to speak ready to go. Uh, maybe next time we will uh, jump on another one and just keep this rolling and there'll be more Jimbo and more Onsug on this show and of course the uh, big showcase show that I am also doing in this series, the bigger sprawling picture. This, we are trying to keep this to the half hour limit uh, more or less and we are reaching that at this very point and that's good because you get to go do and listen to something else. And me, I get to turn the air conditioner back on. So with that, set the controls for the heart of the fun, and we'll catch you the next time.